Limb girdle muscular dystrophy, or LGMD, is a rare genetic disease with 34 different subtypes identified to date. The symptoms can be vague and, based on subtype, emerge at any age between young childhood and early or even late adulthood. Overall, it is characterized by weakness and wasting of the muscles around the hips and shoulders. Clinicians should suspect LGMD when a patient presents with muscle weakness, low exercise tolerance, and muscle pain, or if a young child is found to have elevated transaminases. Progression of symptoms can have a fast or slow onset. Ordering a creatine kinase, or CK for short, may expedite the diagnostic odyssey frequently seen in rare diseases like LGMD. However, not all LGMDs have highly elevated CKs. They can vary from being completely normal to over 100 times the upper limit of normal. If the CK is elevated, even somewhat, and the previously mentioned clinical signs are present, the best course for a clinician is to refer the patient to a neuromuscular specialist. As some LGMDs affect cardiac and respiratory muscles, monitoring and care of these vital systems need to occur as soon as possible to provide life-saving supportive treatment. Neuromuscular specialists have experience with the many subtypes of LGMD and are associated with specialty centers and multidisciplinary teams that can streamline diagnosis and proactively get patients the multi-system care and monitoring they need. These specialists are also knowledgeable about clinical trials that might be available. A specialist may order a gene panel to confirm an LGMD diagnosis. Most commercial labs now cover the most common LGMD genes with results in two to four weeks. If a diagnosis is not obtained in this way, but the phenotype still indicates an LGMD, next-generation sequencing can be used. Muscle biopsy used to be one of the first steps when LGMD was suspected. But with advances in genetic testing, muscle biopsy is now only obtained for immunohistochemical staining to confirm an uncertain diagnosis. The most common and well-studied subtypes of LGMD are named according to the affected proteins, calpanopathies, dysferlinopathies, and anoctamin 5 related protein LGMD have slow to moderate progression and ambulation is lost generally by the third or fourth decade of life. They are recognized by symptoms such as difficulty walking and climbing stairs, walking on tiptoes or an inability to walk on tiptoes, difficulty rising from a seated position, scapular winging, joint contractures, exercise intolerance and muscle pain, particularly in the gastrocnemius and quadriceps muscles. These have low to no risk of cardiac and respiratory complications. Sarcoglycanopathies are marked by difficulty running, climbing stairs, rising from the floor, gait abnormalities, scapular winging, exercise intolerance, calf hypertrophy, and hypercecemia. These have a rapid progression and ambulation is typically lost within 10 years of symptom onset. Life expectancy is only from teens to early adulthood. Cardiac complications are common and severe except for 2DR3 and respiratory impairment occurs in the later stages. Fucatin-related protein is notable for asymptomatic hypercecemia, either severe early onset muscular dystrophy or mild late onset muscular dystrophy. Dilated cardiomyopathy and respiratory impairment are frequent, but the degree of respiratory and cardiac insufficiency in patients does not correlate with the severity of muscle involvement. Patients with LGMD can also develop difficulty swallowing, which can impact nutrition, resulting in one of the higher causes of morbidity and mortality in LGMD. Best practices dictate that any clinician seeing a patient who generates a high index of suspicion for LGMD refer the patient to a neuromuscular specialist for diagnosis. Receiving an accurate diagnosis will result in a multidisciplinary care plan that will best serve the patient.